ME8492 Kinematics of Machinery Unit 4 Gears and Gear Trains Hello students, here in this video we will discuss about the gears, classification of gears, terminology of spur gear, gear materials and form of teeth presented by TPGIT below. Gears What is gears? The motion from one shaft to another shaft may be transmitted with belt rope and chains. These methods are mostly used when the two shafts are having the long distance. This is the uh, belt drive. Here the distance between the two shafts are very long. Okay. Uh, this kind of arrangement we are using the chain, rope uh, and uh, belt drives. This is the rope drive. The distance from the one shaft to another shaft is there in the power distance. Uh, uh, this kind of arrangement we are using the belt and rope drives and uh, as well as chain drives. Okay. But if the distance between the two shafts is very small, then gears are used to transmit motor motion from one shaft to another. The arrangement of the distance between the two shafts are very small. Here yeah, this is the gear arrangement. The distance between the two shafts. This is the shaft one, this is the shaft two. The between this two shaft, the distance is very small. Uh, this arrangement is very compact uh, arrangement also. Uh, for this uh, types of arrangement, we are using the gear. Two, three gears. Two, three gears are we are using. In case of belt and rope and drives is a not positive drive. The belt and rope drives are the not positive drive. There is slip and creep which reduce the velocity ratio. In belt drive, uh, there is the possibility to uh, slip the belt from this pulley. Okay, because of this, the velocity ratio is. Uh, Chances to reduce. Okay, velocity. The, you can uh, cannot uh, achieve uh, most and exact uh, velocity ratio uh, from this uh, belt and rope drives. But the gear drives is the positive and smooth drive, which transmit uh, uh, exact velocity ratio. The gear is defined as the two-three element, which is used to transmitting rotary motion from one sub to another sub. The gear is the two three element. This is the gear. This is the two three element, which is used to transmit the uh, rotating motion from one sub to another sub. This is called a gear. Okay. The next uh, advantages and disadvantages of gear drive. The following are the advantages and disadvantages of the gear drive as compared to belt, rope and chain drives. This one is uh, advantages that transmit exact velocity ratio. It may use it to transmit uh, large power. It has a uh, high efficiency comparatively uh, belt and rope drives. It has uh, reliable service. It has the Compact layout. This is the compact layout. Disadvantages. The manufacture of the gears require special tools and equipment. For manufacturing the gear wheel, uh, we have the special tools and equipment and previous uh, equipment and previous tools. Okay. And uh, the error in cutting the tooth may cause the vibration and noise during the operation. Uh, if, if you are uh, making the mistake while uh, cutting the gear tooth and uh, cutting the gear profile, uh, it will uh, cause the uh, making the vibration in the system and as well as making the huge noise in the system and uh, uh, transmitting uh, unit. Okay. These are all the advantages and disadvantages of the gear track. Next, classifications of gears. The gears are classified in uh, four major categories. Uh, one is according to the position of axis of the shaft. According to the position of axis of the shaft. And next one is uh, 
according to the peripheral velocity and third one is according to the types of gears and fourth one is according to the position of teeth on the spark gear. First let's see the according to the position of axis of the shaft. First one is parallel shaft. Parallel shaft means the, this is the gear arrangement. This is shaft 1, this is shaft 2. The both shafts are in the parallel position. Uh, the both the, both the shafts are arranged in parallel position. This kind of arrangement is called the parallel shaft. For example, uh, parallel shaft arrangement, for example, spur gear. Uh, this is the spur gear. Okay. The, mostly the spur gear arrangements, uh, this is the spur gear arrangement. The spur gear arrangements are the parallel shaft arrangement only. Okay. The shaft the shaft on the shaft two. both the shafts are in the parallel arrangement okay the spur gear is uh, the two parallel and coplanar shaft impact stress is high in in uh, spur gear the impact stress is more okay and helical gear in helical gear uh, in spur gear and uh, helical gear most are uh, uh, seen same uh, visible in same uh, in small difference is the the teeth are inclined to the axis. In skeletal gear, the teeth are inclined to the axis of the gear. In spur gear, the teeth are uh, parallel to the axis of the gear. Okay, this is the difference from spur gear and helical gear. In uh, spur gear, the teeth are uh, parallel to the axis of the gear. Here in helical gear, the teeth are inclined to the axis of the Care. This is the difference between spur gear and helical gear. Uh, in, spur, in helical gear, low impact stress is uh, produced. Okay. Comparatively, spur gear, the, the helical uh, gear uh, produces the low impact stress. Uh, high velocity ratio uh, can we can uh, transmit and a greater load carrying capacity. The helical gear is the greater load carrying capacity uh, as compared to spur gear. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, spur double helical gear or uh, uh, axial truss. This is the double helical gear. Uh, this is the hel double helical gear. The teeth are inclined to the axis of the gear, gear and uh, in the both the side. In the symmetrical, the both the side, the helical uh, gear teeth is cutted in the uh, outer surface of the gear. Okay. Uh, this arrangement is called a uh, uh, double helical gear. Uh, for example, uh, uh, herring bone gear. This is also called the herring bone gear. Okay, this type of gear is called herring bone gear or a double helical gear. Okay, the next one is a uh, intersecting shaft. Intersecting shaft means the this is the gear, this is the pinion. Uh, for example, the first example is the bevel gear arrangement is the uh, intersecting gear arrangement, intersecting shaft arrangement. Here the shaft, this is the gear and uh, this is the pinion. The, this axis, the gear axis is uh, in vertical and uh, pinion axis is in uh, horizontal. The both the axes are intersecting at any one point. Okay, at the, any one point. This kind of arrangement is called the intersecting shaft arrangement. Uh, for example, the bevel gear. Okay, this is the bevel gear arrangement. This is the straight bevel gear. This is straight bevel gear. This is spiral or curved bevel gear. Okay, uh, non-parallel, non-intersecting co shaft plan. The best example is bevel gear is the intersecting shaft uh, arrangement. Next one is spiral bevel gear. Uh, this is the spiral bevel gear. This is the, this is also spiral bevel gear arrangement. This is gear. This is pinion. This is mostly used in the uh, transmission unit and differential unit in automobile engineering. Differential often it is used to transmit the power from engine to or a, uh, transmission unit into the uh, rear axle. Rear axle. Okay. Uh, this is the spiral bevel gear arrangement. The next one is non-parallel and non-intersecting shaft. Uh, it is also called the skew shaft. Okay. The skew shaft or spiral gears are uh, different uh, gears are there. First one is uh, Hyperboloid gear. Hyperboloid means uh, this is the hyperboloid arrangement. The two gears are the uh, here. The this uh, this is gear one. This is gear two. The both the gears uh, axis is non-intersecting 
and as well as non parallel so both the gears shaft uh, both shaft non intersecting as well as non parallel okay the next one is uh, cross helical gear this is the uh, cross helical gear or uh, on uh, this is helical gear only uh, one gear is in vertical position other one is the horizontal position that is of the gear is vertical this is horizontal this is also uh, cross helical gear only Okay. This kind of arrangement is called a cross helical gear. Here also, the axis of the shaft is non-intersecting, okay, as well as not parallel. Okay, this kind of arrangement is called a non-intersecting and non uh, intersecting and non-parallel gear arrangement. Next one is uh, uh, high bone, so high boiled gear, high boiled gear. This is the high boiled gear. This is similar to the spiral bower gear. Okay, this is similar to the spiral bower gear, but one different is the uh, what is the different means? Uh, the pinion is the this is the gear. This is the pinion. The pinion is uh, not uh, placed in the axis, the center axis of the gear. This is uh, some offset from the uh, center axis of the gear. This is placed in some uh, offset. Okay, so. The, uh, this uh, this axis as well as the gear axis non intersecting as well as non parallel. Okay, this kind of arrangement is called a uh, high boiled gear arrangement. Next one is warm gear. This is the warm gear arrangement. This is warm and this is the gear. This is called this is also non intersecting. The axis of the uh, <coughs> gear and warm is non intersecting. Okay, as well as non parallel. This kind of arrangement is called a non parallel and non intersecting shaft or Q shaft arrangement. The next one is according to the peripheral velocity. In peripheral velocity, the gears are classified in three types one is low velocity, medium velocity, and high velocity. In low velocity gears, having the velocity less than 3 meter per second, uh, the kind of uh, gears are called low velocity gears. And medium velocity uh, between 3 to 15 meter per second uh, and high velocity gear greater than 15 meter per second this kind of velocity gears are called a uh, high velocity gear next one is according to the types of gears in types of gear gears are classified in three types one is external gear and internal gears and rack and pinion in external gear the gears are Encased in external, in the outer diameter of the gear wheel. Okay, uh, this kind of uh, engagement is called the external gear arrangement or external gears. Okay, next one is internal gear. The inside of the gear, the gear is engaged here. See the the ring gear is the uh, only one planet gear is the okay this kind of arrangement uh, as well as this kind of arrangement this is the epicyclic gear train this kind of arrangement is called the uh, internal gear trains and next one is rack and pinion this is the rack this is the pinion this kind of arrangement is called the uh, rack and pinion arrangement and next one is according to the position of the teeth on uh, this gear surface uh, classified in three uh, types uh, straight, inclined, and curved. Uh, the spur gear is the teeth are straight in position. This is called a straight teeth, okay, teeth position and inclined. And this uh, helical gear is uh, inclined teeth, okay, this is called a inclined teeth. The next one is uh, curved. The spiral gears are called a curved teeth, okay, this is the uh, uh, depending on teeth on gear surface. Okay, this is straight teeth. This is inclined teeth. This is the spiral curved or spiral teeth. Okay. Uh, <coughs> next terminology of uh, spur gear. Okay, this is the uh, cut section of the spur gear. Only two teeth are uh, uh, displayed here. Okay. Uh, using this two teeth, uh, you will see the what are the terms used in gears uh, in technically. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is the two teeth. The outermost uh, diameter, the outer surface diameter, uh, the outer surface diameter is called the uh, 
अडंडम सर्कल आउटर सर्कल डायमीटर आउटर सर्कल सॉरी आउटर सरफेस सर्कल इज कॉल्ड अडंडम सर्कल द इनर सरफेस द इन गेट इट द इनर सरफेस सर्कल इज कॉल्ड अ रूट आर डायडम सर्कल लेट्स सी द आउटर मोस्ट सर्कल इज कॉल्ड अ अडंडम सर्कल द इनर मोस्ट सर्कल इज कॉल्ड अ डायडम सर्कल डायडम सर्कल ऑफ द दिस इज दिस इज नॉट द डायडम द दिस इज दिस कर्व इज कॉल्ड अ डायडम सर्कल ओके द नेक्स्ट वन इज द बिटवीन द अडंडम एंड डायडम द वन इमेजिनरी सर्कल इज द okay this circle is called this called circle is called a pitch circle okay uh, the gear is uh, denoted by denoted by this mentioned by pitch circle diameter only okay uh, if you go to buy the saw uh, the gear uh, you mention with the pitch circle diameter only okay and not a random circle uh, i mean uh, external diameter internal diameter Uh, using only pitch circle diameter using pitch circle diameter only uh, you can buy the gear gears okay <coughs> and then uh, this thickness this width is called the uh, face width okay this this is uh, face width of the gear this is the face width of the gear and uh, next one is this this portion is called uh, top plate the top side of the portion is called uh, top land this portion is called top land of the gears okay and this uh, up to the an uh, random circle to uh, pitch circle diameter this portion is called the face this portion is called face of the gate this portion is called face up to uh, the pitch circle diameter okay and this portion is called the flank This is the flank. Sorry. Okay. This portion is called a flank. This is top land. This is the face. This is the flank. Okay. <coughs> the next one is. Uh, okay. This is the circular pitch. Pitch of the. Okay. Okay. Circular pitch is uh, nothing but the one point of the uh, one tip to corresponding point of the another tip distance is the distance between uh, one point of the gear uh, here the the starting point uh, uh, one point of the gear to corresponding point of the another tip is called the circular pitch or pitch okay this is called the circular pitch the next one is uh, thickness of the tooth the thickness of the tooth is calculated by in pitch circle diameter only they are not calculated in random circle and random circle which is calculated in pitch circle diameter okay and <coughs> uh, this distance uh, in uh, in one tip in pitch circle diameter the starting point of the gear to this uh, another point of the gear this is called the thickness to thickness of the gear okay the next one is uh, tooth space that is Uh, distance between two teeth face, uh, which is uh, measured in uh, pitch circle diameter only. Okay, uh, in gear we are not consider the random circle and random circle uh, in measurement. Okay, in measuring uh, condition we are measuring only in the pitch circle diameter. Okay, if you have to measure the thickness of the tooth, we are using pitch circle diameter only. If you want to measure the uh, uh, tooth face, we are using the pitch circle diameter only. As well as we have to find the pitch of the gear. Uh, <coughs> there also we are using the circle diameter only. Okay. Uh, and then addendum and addendum. Here the addendum is nothing but the outermost circle. The addendum circle to the pitch circle diameter distance is called the Random, and random is nothing but uh, the pitch circle diameter to the uh, root diameter. That means a random circle diameter. This distance is called the uh, root diameter. Or sorry, uh, random diameter. Random is called the random. Uh, and uh, extra one circle is the. This is called the working depth. This is the working depth circle. Okay, 
which is uh, <coughs> between some clearance uh, this is the clearance some clearance from uh, root circle to the that means random circle to the uh, pitch circle so some clearance is the this is called the clearance uh, this depth only okay the random circle to the working circle is there no this uh, working depth circle up to this distance only working depth this depth only the tools are uh, in cage okay uh, some clearance will be there okay uh, for smooth uh, <coughs> running of the gears okay the next <coughs> let's see the definitions of the pitch circle and pitch circle diameter what, what is the definition pitch circle is uh, it is an imaginary circle which by pure rolling action will give the same motion as the actual gear okay next one is a pitch circle diameter it is the diameter of the pitch circle uh, the size of the gear is usually specified by the pitch circle diameter already i told the size of the gear is specified by the pitch circle diameter only uh, they were not used outer diameter and inner diameter okay only they were measure, uh, mentioned the pitch circle diameter only it is also known as uh, pitch diameter Okay. Next one is pitch point. It is the common point of contact between two pitch circles. Uh, if you are uh, mating the or uh, messing the two gears, the common mating point of the two pitch circle of the uh, both the okay, gear and pinion. It is called the uh, pitch uh, point. Okay. Next one is pitch surface. It is the surface of the rolling disc uh, uh, which the messing gear have. Uh, replaced at the pitch circle okay next one is uh, pressure angle or angle of ability it is the angle between the common normal two two gear teeth at the point of contact and the common tangent at the pitch point okay this is the angle between the common tangent line to the common normal line okay this is called the <coughs> pressure angle it is usually denoted by pi the standard pressure angle is 14 and half degree to the 20 degree. The pressure angle is between uh, always between 14 and half degree to the 20 degree. In between only the pressure angle will be the the pi value should be 14 and half degree to 20 degree. Next one is addendum. It is the radial distance of the tooth from pitch circle diameter to the top of the tooth. Okay, already I see. The radial distance of the pitch circle diameter to the top of the face, top of the gear, is called the addendum. Uh, so let's do it. What is addendum? The radial distance from the pitch circle diameter to the inside diameter or root diameter of the <coughs> teeth or bottom of the teeth. Let's see, it is the radial distance from the tooth from pitch circle to the bottom of the tooth. Next one is uh, addendum circle. It is the circle drawn through the top of the tooth and is uh, concentric with the circle. Okay. The, the adenum circle concentricity with the pitch circle, okay. uh, which is the uh, outer top of the teeth. Okay. Next one is the uh, adenum circle. It is a circle drawn through the bottom of the tooth. It is also called the root circle. Note the root circle equal to pitch circle diameter into cos phi where phi is the pressure angle okay the root circle diameter should be pitch circle diameter into cos phi okay and next one is circular pitch or a pitch circle diameter circular pitch okay it is distance measured of circumference of the pitch circle from a point of one teeth to the corresponding point of the next thing uh, is called the point of uh, uh, teeth to the corresponding point of the next teeth okay point of teeth to the one teeth to the corresponding point of the next teeth this distance is called the uh, <coughs> this distance circular pitch okay it is usually denoted by pc Mathematically, circular pitch equal to PC equal to by 
into capital D divided by T. Here capital D is the diameter of the pitch circle and T is the number of teeth on the wheel. A little concentration will show that the two gears will mesh together correctly if two wheels have the same circular pitch. Okay. <coughs> if uh, meshing the two gears, okay, it should be meshed together in correctly. We have to use the same circular pitch, which, uh, which will be uh, gear all engaged in uh, smooth and uh, uh, exactly it will mesh. Okay. Uh, next one is moral. It is the ratio of the pitch circle diameter is millimeter to the number of teeth. Pitch circle diameter to the number of teeth. That means uh, model M equal to uh, D divided by T. Diameter of the pitch circle diameter of the uh, gear wheel to the number of teeth on the gear wheel. Uh, note, uh, recommended series of the model in Indian standard. Some of the recommended standard uh, model is given in uh, uh, standard Indian standard uh, 1.25, 1.52, uh, up to 20, as well as uh, second model is uh, 1.125, 1.375, 1.75, up to 18. This is, is the second size. Uh, from this uh, standard value, the model value should be uh, 1 to 20 only. The, okay, the model value 1 to 20. These are the Standard value from the Indian standard. Then next one is uh, path of contact. It is the path of traced by the point of contact of two teeth uh, being from the beginning to the end of the engagement. Next one is length of uh, path of contact. It is the length of common normal cut off by the addendum circle with the wheel and pinion. What is wheel and pinion? If uh, missing the two gears, uh, gear 1 and gear 2, the bigger size of the gear is called the wheel or gear. And smaller size of the gear is called the pinion. Okay. Either gear will be the dri uh, driver and the pinion will be the driver. That is not the problem. The, <coughs> the bigger gear is called the wheel and smaller gear is called the pinion. Okay. Uh, the next one is the arc of contact. It is the path traced by the point on the pitch circle from the beginning to the end of the engagement of the given pair of the teeth. The arc of contact uh, consists of two parts. One is arc of approach and arc of research. The arc of approach is uh, the portion of the path of contact from the beginning of the engagement to the pitch point. The beginning of the engagement to the pitch point, that, uh, that distance is called uh, uh, arc of approach. Next one is arc of recess. It is the portion of the uh, path of contact from the pitch point to the end of the engagement <coughs> of the end of the engagement or else uh, disengagement of the pair teeth. Okay. Note the ratio of the uh, length of arc of contact to the circular pitch is uh, uh, known as the contact ratio or number of pair of the pair in the teeth. The contact ratio is nothing but the length of arc of contact to the circular pitch. It is called the uh, contact ratio. Okay. Uh, next. Gear material. In gear, what are the materials used in industries? Let's see in one by one. The material used for manufacturing the gear depends upon the strength and service condition of the like wear and noise. The gears are manufactured depending upon the service condition and wear, wear and strength and service condition. Depending on this only, the gears are manufacturing. Okay. Uh, the gears may be manufactured from uh, metallic and non-metallic material. Gears are uh, manufacturing both metallic and non-metallic. Depending on the uh, application only, uh, they were used uh, metallic gears and non-metallic gears. Okay. Uh, the metallic gears uh, <coughs> with cut the teeth uh, are 
commercially obtained in castile steel and bronze okay the mostly the, these three materials are used in uh, commercial gas okay the one is cast iron and steel and bronze the mostly the these three materials are used to cut the uh, metallic materials <coughs> non metallic materials like wood uh, raw hide compressed paper and synthetic uh, resin like nylon are used to gas okay non metallic material the wood raw hide uh, compressed paper are mostly used to making the non metallic gas especially for reducing the noise Uh, this kind of materials are uh, used to reduce the noise in non-metallic materials. Okay. The next, uh, the cast iron. The the cast iron is widely used for the manufacture the gear due to the good <coughs> wearing properties, excellent machinability, and easy to produce in the complicated shapes by casting method. Okay. Uh, because of this reason, uh, the cast iron is widely used to manufacture the Uh, yes. What are the reason? Good wearing properties. The cast iron having the good wearing properties <coughs> and excellent machinability. The cast iron used to machining uh, cast iron materials can uh, machining very easily. Okay, which is the flexible material to manufacturing uh, the any complex shapes. Okay, and uh, easy to uh, produce the complicated shapes by the cast uh, casting methods. In, uh, in casting methods also, we can produce the complex shape of uh, <coughs> gear teeth okay <coughs> the cast iron gears uh, with cut the teeth may be employed the smooth action is uh, is not important the uh, in case of uh, smooth action is not important that that kind of uh, application the cast iron gears are used okay uh, next one is steel <coughs> the steel is used for a high strength gear in high strength gears Uh, the steel is the steel materials used to manufacturing for the uh, gear okay and steel may be uh, plain carbon steel or uh, alloy alloy steel the both the steels are used to manufacture the gears the steel gears are usually heat treated <coughs> in order to combine uh, properly the toughness as well as the tooth hardness okay the heat treatment uh, process uh, the after manufacturing the gear teeth uh, gear profile uh, making the gear profile in the steel uh, steel gear <coughs> you have to uh, hardening the gear profiles okay gear teeth are uh, hardening uh, it's a combination of uh, toughness and the tooth hardness <coughs> next one is the phosphor bronze is widely used for the warm gear in warm gear uh, mostly uh, used in the bronze material is used to Uh, making the warm gears uh, because of in order to reduce wear in uh, bronze is uh, wear resistance is more as compared to the uh, cast iron as well as steel okay so why because uh, uh, bronze is used to making the warm gears the warm gear arrangement as well as warm gear design is uh, more complicated <coughs> so we are using the more uh, uh, most Uh, wear resistance materials are used to manufacture the warm gear to reduce the wear of <coughs> warm which will be excessive with the cast iron steel okay the bronze is comparatively uh, cast iron and steel the wear resistance is more uh, from steel and cast iron okay these are all the three metallic materials are widely used in the industries to manufacture the gears <coughs> one is cast iron steel and bronze the cast iron is used in uh, uh, in action of important the smooth action is not important that can that's a that kind of process uh, are used in the cast iron okay uh, the high strength gears are used in steels okay uh, the steel may be plain carbon steel or alloy steel okay the more wear resistance you have to more wear resistance uh, that kind of uh, gears are manufactured from uh, bronze phosphor bronze okay the next one is <coughs> form of teeth the actual part is uh, the following two types of uh, teeth commonly used one is cycloidal teeth next one is inverted teeth in this uh, two two form of teeth uh, we are mostly used in inverted teeth in uh, in uh, in future classes also we will discuss about the inverted teeth problem most of the gears are 
cut by the invalid profiles only okay the in uh, two forms of uh, profile only uh, cut in the guess uh, see this is the profile okay this profile is the no uh, this profile is the invalid profile okay this is the invalid profile see this is invalid or cycloidal profile in the two profile only cut for the <coughs> guess okay okay uh, thank you student this is the uh, basics of the gears uh, i hope you understand uh, what is the gear and the classifications of gear what are the classifications of the and the terminology what are the terms used in gears and um, what are the materials used to manufacture in the gears and what are the form of gears okay uh, this is the uh, basic things of gears uh, you may know uh thank you uh thank you so much uh, if you have uh, any doubt just come on uh, let me know uh, i will uh, give you the uh, reply okay thank you so much all the best